All right, friends and neighbors, time now for another networking video. I thought today we would talk a little bit about IP version 4 fragmentation. Okay, first off, let's talk a little bit about our IP packet. So what we're seeing in front of us is an actual Wireshark capture, and we can see all of the fields of the IP header laid out for us. And what we are particularly interested in at this early stage is taking a look at the identification, the flags, and the fragment offset. And I might also mention we've got this length field here because that's going to be important to us here in just a minute. All right, so here's our basic problem. An IP packet can be 65,000 bytes because the field that indicates the length is two bytes in size. An Ethernet frame or a wireless frame has a limited capacity in terms of payload, which is much smaller than that of an IP packet. So, if we're talking about an Ethernet frame, it has a maximum data field size of 1500 bytes. So the minute you have a large IP packet, you now have to chop that IP packet up into pieces. So we have lots of communications that have to be broken up. Anytime you send a large file, anytime you're not doing email or um, texting, or I should say messaging, uh, you're going to have to break that thing up. And so lots and lots of communications have to be broken up. But here's the problem. When you break them all up and you send them to the destination, how do you put them all back together again? So you've got to find all of the parts that go together and then make sure that they're all in the right order because once an IP packet is sent off by itself, there's no guarantee that a collection of IP packets will arrive in the same order that they left. So let's take another, you know, maybe clearer look at the IP header. And on the right, we've got the one from the RFC. And on the left, we've just got a, you know, a cleaner version of that. And again, what we're worried about here is this second line. And the way that you read documents like this is you read from left to right. And each row is four bytes in size, 32 bits. So if we go down to the second row, we've got this identification field, flags, and the fragment offset. And we'll see that those three fields work together. And we're going to give a nod to this total length field because it's going to give us an indication of the problem. And also, we want to try and hit that target number here. And I'll show you what I mean in just a minute. All right, so let's talk a little bit more about these fields. Every IP packet has an ID. So there's a 16-bit ID number. It's randomly generated. and this identifies a particular IP packet. Now it also turns out that when we put fragments together, then we are going to use the same ID for all of the fragments, hint, hint, wink, wink. Now the flags field, that indicates how our fragmentation process is gonna be handled or if in fact we need to fragment at all. Any transmission that is part of a collection of fragments that are gonna be put together, if there's more fragments to come, we need to set a flag that indicates that, yeah, there's, there's more fragments that you need to take care of. And then on the last fragment, there's no more fragments that are going to be there, so that flag will be set to zero again. Now the fragment offset is going to be there so that we can tell how to put these things back in order. So initially, the first one will have a zero fragment offset, meaning that it's kind of the first one and then everybody else will be offset by however much data came before. And that is how we put the whole thing back together. And so the fragment offset is critical for getting things in the right order. So here's our solution to the fragmentation problem. Fragments belonging to the same data chunk that had to be chopped up, they'll all have the same ID. The flags will help us with the fragments that we're collecting along the way. Are we still looking out for more? or do we finally get to the end of them? And then the fragment offset, as I said, is going to be the thing that allows us to put them in the right order. So let's do an example. So what I'm gonna do is issue the command ping 192.168.15.1. happens to be my gateway here, uh, and I'm gonna set the length of the ICMP datagram, the ICMP echo request, to 4500. And what that's going to do is force the creation of a collection of Ethernet frames. 
Why? Because Ethernet frames can only carry 1500 bytes. Okay, so we're going to see how many frames this creates. And then we'll take a couple of notes along the way. We'll examine the capture to see if we can put the whole thing back together like your computer might. So here is Wireshark. So let's start our capture. And we'll just start this thing going. And then we'll go over and issue the command. Here is the command that we're going to run. So fire away. There we go. And it looks like we got some goodness happening here in uh, Wireshark. So we're going to pause this for a sec. Now, uh, I just told you that we did a ping. Now, what ping does is generate ICMP echo requests and echo reply. So I might say, well, look at all this stuff that I've got going on here. Maybe what I'll do is I'll filter on ICMP. And I see the ICMPs, but what I don't realize is that this is actually missing all the fragments. And the important detail here is that fragments don't have the same header as the original or the source packet does. So what we want to do is we want to grab the address of the node in question here. And what we'll see all of a sudden is that, that I do see ICMP here, but that I see that the, the packet was fragmented. So I actually need all of the fragments that go along with this if I really want to understand what's going on here. Now I can see several exchanges, right? Because Windows does this by default four times. So there are four groups of packets, both on the outgoing side and on the return side. We're only going to worry about one. All right, so let's take a look at some of the details here. First, what, we're going to, what I'm going to tell you is that all of these go together. So that ping-L4500, we go, okay, 4500, 4500 divided by 1500 is 3. I should have generated 3 frames. But wait a minute, it looks like I generated 4. Okay, we'll put that aside for right now, and we'll see if we can figure that out here in a second. Now I'm going to put uh, WordPad side by side with this so that we can sort of keep track of our numbers as we go. All right, so now we've got WordPad and Wireshark side by side. Let's take a look at our very first packet. Now I'm going to open up the IP header, and I'm going to start examining what I've got going on here. I've got a total length field here of 1,500 bytes. Hmm. Okay, so that sounds like it tracks along with the Ethernet maximum frame size. Uh, so I've got an identification here. Whoops, spelling counts. There we go. I've got an identification here. Looks like of uh, D5. Oh dear. My identification is D579. All right, now what does the flags field say? The flags field says more fragments. So we'll just set that to, uh, we'll say that more fragments, you know, we'll say this, we'll say more MF, more fragments. And then what's the offset? Well, the offset is zero. Well, what the offset means is that uh, this is at the beginning of the collection of packets, meaning that I'm not, I'm not buried in the data, I'm at the beginning of the data. Well, if that's the fragment ID that I'm worried about, take a look at the ID here in the other ones, D579, D579, and D579. So all of them have the same fragment ID, D579, D579 and D579. Okay, so that means that they all go together. Well, let's take a look at the flags field. In the first fragment, we know that there are more fragments to come because we're at the very beginning of the data. The next fragment says, yep, more fragments. Yep, more fragments. And then we get to the end of this particular collection no more fragments. So here we've got more fragments, more fragments, 
and we'll just say no more fragments. Well, let's take a look at the offset. We know that in this very first one, the fragment offset is zero. And the total length here is 1500. Hmm. And maybe I'll add that. Maybe we'll say we got uh, a length here. Oops. of 1500. Now the next packet or the next fragment that goes along with this also has a length of 1500 but the fragment offset is 1480. Hmm, we'll have to think about that here for a sec. So we got 1480 right here but the total length is 1500. Alright, let's take a look at the next one. Here the total length is 1500 again and the fragment offset is 2960. Hmm. All right. So it appears that we're getting farther into the data, but I don't really understand at this point why everything is 1500, but the fragment offsets are smaller than that. And then lastly, we have this we have this fragment offset of 4440 and a total length of 88. Boy, that is weird. 4440 and then a total length of 88. And remember that the original size was what? 4500. So we're trying to arrive at that. Right now it looks like we have 1500 plus 1500 plus another 1500 plus 88 which of course equals 4588 how is that working i'm not sure so we're we're off here somehow we sent 4500 bytes of data and the answer is in what this field really means so when we go back to this total length field the total length field is actually the data that we're carrying plus the IP header. So in this first packet, what we really have to do is we have to say 1500 minus 20 because the size of the header here is 20 bytes. And all of a sudden this fragment offset makes sense because I was actually able to carry 1480 bytes of the ICMP packet that I was sending. So is that true for the next one as well? Well, the header length here was 20. The total length is the header plus the data. All of a sudden we go, oh, okay. So really, we keep going on with sort of the same idea. And then just for fun, we'll take a look at the other one. And it's 1500. We have a header length of 20 and then we go to the data so same thing all right now what about this 88 where did that come from well the total length here is um, 88 bytes and we have a 20 byte IP header so that would seem to mean that we break this 88 down to 68 but I've also got this ICMP header here too. And it turns out the ICMP header for an ICMP echo request is eight bytes. So this is actually 88 minus 20 minus eight. Well, what does that equal? Well, we know that we've got 1480 plus 1480. Now, it turns out that 1480 plus 1480 is 2960. So, if we take a look at these offsets, all of a sudden these offsets start to make a little more sense. They start to mean, start to indicate that we've moved the data that far in and we're subtracting the headers off. So, now we understand where these offsets come from. So we're carrying 1480 plus 1480 plus 1480, which of course is just 60 shy of 4500, 
Well, what's 88 minus 20 minus 8? 60. And that is where we get 4,500 from. When we put this all together, we can sort of track through what all the numbers are doing, as long as we remember some of the definitions of the basic fields, and then we start to understand what the offset is, and how the header length is related to that, and what our flags are doing. So it looks like we were able to do our example and actually put it together like a computer. Well, there we go. This has been a discussion of IP version 4 fragmentation. It turns out that IP version 6 fragmentation is very similar. What we have to remember is that we were putting together fragment IDs, right? All of the fragments have the same ID. The flags tell us what's going on with the fragments. Are there more to come or are we done? And then the fragment offset tells us how to put them together back in order. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Like and subscribe if I helped, and may your packets always reach their destinations, even if they're fragmented.